Welcome to the Design Hit 8 video learning series. We've already discussed in the two earlier videos for this set the side menu bar icons and in this third video of the set we'll be looking at the accompanying set of top menu bar icons and their functions. Looking at the top menu bar in Design Knit 8, let's go there now. We want to go to the Stitch Designer section of the program and let's move some things out of the way. Let's make a circle so that we can see things that are happening in the top menu bar. Turn the circle off. If I look at the top menu bar, they're put together in groups. This first group is zoom in and zoom out quickly. The zooming in zooms in one pixel per stitch and it keeps it proportional according to the tensions that I have set in this. This is zoom out one pixel per stitch. If you want to zoom in and out faster, one Right now we have 13 pixels per stitch, we could say 19, and it would zoom in larger very quickly. And I can zoom in and out as I want. The next icon is zoom into a selection box. We can make a selection box that covers this circle, and I can say zoom into the selection box, and it will zoom in so that you can see this box very clearly and edit this. So this is zoom out to the maximum view. A lot of times you can take this, zoom into the selection box, zoom into a small area like this, and say zoom into the selection box. This zooms in very closely. I can pick up my pencil and make a few changes. I can zoom out to maximum view, and I can then make another selection box, maybe down here and zoom into the box, edit this here, zoom back out, and so you have a very quick way of zooming in and out to make changes to various portions of your design. The next icon that comes up is the palette position pointer. This toggles on and off right here. It's showing me that the left mouse button color is red, and it's also red in the yarn palette. It's showing me the right mouse button color is this light blue, which is true. Here it is in the palette, and this melon green is the middle mouse button color. It's also showing me, if I put my cursor here on this stitch, that this stitch is at row 7 of the design, and it's at left stitch 8, and there's 33 stitches more to the right. So this allows me to accurately move things into position. Let's turn this off for now. The next two icons in the group are the horizontal and vertical rulers. Once these are activated, you can turn on, I'll activate both of them. You can turn on this horizontal ruler, you can move it over, and here's my zero point of origin right here. And it's in centimeters right now, and it's saying it's three and a half centimeters to the other side of the circle. If I click on this once, it says now that it's 11 stitches to the end of this circle. So I have a quick way of figuring out positions and information. Similarly, here's my zero. If I put the zero on the bottom of the circle, I can measure up in rows. Now are 22 rows high for this vertical mirror. And if I change this to centimeters, it says that it's five and probably a quarter centimeters. If you work in inches, option units of measurement, change this to inches, and it will toggle this stitches between inches and stitches instead of inches and centimeters. Let's turn these two rulers back off for a minute. This next icon toggles the grid on and off. It gets rid of the fabric texture that's here. This one toggles off to turn off the stitch texture and it also, if I toggle again, it will toggle onto nothing. If I turn my stitch texture on and I add some, pick up my pencil and let's add in some symbols. These are twisted stitches. These are twisted pearlwise stitches. This is an open eyelet. This is a stitch over and let's put this eyelet lace stitch we'll put one over here 
and let's put the eyelid in for that as well. Turn my pencil off and I make a little selection box and I zoom in to just this area, zoom in and move my wool box out of the way. You can see here's the twisted knit stitches, here's the twisted pearl wise stitches, here's my eyelet and here's my transferred stitch, here's my eyelet and here's my transferred stitch. If I turn the grid off then it shows it to me in the stitch symbols. You can draw in in whichever way you feel comfortable with. There are a lot of stitches for hand knitting that are not available as fabric texture pictures, but you can use these here, this one here, pick up my pencil. You can use these to include in your stitch pattern. Let's zoom back out and let's turn the box off. The next icon here is to view the yarn colors in this palette and I've turned it off. I'm going to turn it back on again and it's going to show me all the yarn colors. This one toggles the stitches. Now it's turned off all these stitches and now I'm going to toggle them back on. As you do this, toggle these stitches off, notice that this stitch organizer here palette disappears. If I toggle this on and off, notice that the yarn palette disappears as well as the color in the design. Then let's toggle the yarn color on also. There we go. This icon here leaves the color here. Let's turn this pencil off. If I click on this, it gets rid of the yarn palette. And these three are different palettes organizers. And it gets rid of the palette yarn palette organizer. And if I turn it back on, it reappears and it does not affect the color as when we use this, it turned the color and the palette off. This one turns only the yarn palette off. This Similarly, this turns off the stitch symbols palette, but it leaves the stitch symbols in the design. This opens up the cables patterns that we have. These are the patterns that I have currently in my design. I can use this to place these down on the pattern piece. Let's close this, that are in use, and I could add this to the palette. And now I have the ability to use this in my palette as well. Close. And when I open up my cables palette, I have these cables new in the design. The next group of icons are the selection tool icons. The first one is to draw a selection box here, and this draws a selection box around whatever we want. Selecting part of the pattern is the first step in a variety of editing. With the box active, tools will only work within the box. If I say with my paint can and pick up yellow and I said fill this, it fills only things that happen within the box. And I'll fill this too. If I did not have a box, it would fill everywhere. But everything, whenever you have the box active, things only happen within the box. Let's turn our paint can off. You can turn this off by clicking on this to show the untagged box selection. Now it's showing. You can see the little line around here. This turns the tagged selection box on. Puts a middle tag in that you can use to move a box around. So I might want to work on this box here, and then I might want to grab it and say I want to work on this area here. And let's put this back where it was. And I can say, pick up my corners, and I can move this box to another area. And then say, zoom into the selection box, make my edits right here, and with no box is open, I'm going to say edit clear the yarn colors and it'll clear all the yarn colors for me. So this is these selection boxes. The last section are related to shapes. The first one here is open a shape. It brings up your thumbnail browser. Let's open up a baby cardigan. Okay, now it's asking me use the current stitch designer tension, use the shape file tension, default tension, or change the new values. I'm going to use the current stitch tension because that's the one that I've made the swatch with. So I'm going to say OK to continue. Now it's asking me for the baby cardigan, what piece would you like to open? I can open one piece at a time. I can hold down my control key and open up another piece or even another piece at a time. I can turn it back off by 
clicking on this with my control key. If I held down my shift key, I can click on a whole row of these. And so let's let's just look at the front. Okay. Still 40 stitches by 40 rows as one repeat, but it has numbers of repeats so that we can have a piece of fabric large enough for the front right of the garment. I'm going to put in these little hearts. Now I have all my pattern pieces. Let's say let's say shapes view all the pieces. And I'm going to use this cutout button again. And it's going to show me each of the pieces. There's a there's a front here hiding. This is the back. And here's the other front. And I can line these up the way I want. And sometimes it's easier to see what you're doing with the pieces. Whoops. With the pieces cut out. Sometimes it's easier to do this when you just see the fabric. Let's not and that's a little bit busy. I like to work with them cut out. I can say shapes, view a piece, just show me the front right, and now cut this out. And this is what it would look like knit. Then I can yet say move this piece. And I can move it where I would like to have it. Maybe so the hearts are all there. Here's for all the hearts. When the piece is in exactly the right place relative to each other, then you say shapes. And you say save this shape. And it will save this positioning information with this garment shape. So if I said shapes integrate, it says here for these pieces that they're all integrated with the bow stitch pattern. Okay, and that's what we just did is we, la we laid out our garment pieces onto this bow stitch pattern. We can make a change anytime past that piece here closes the, all the shaping file. And so that closes it. This one opens the shaping file. This one cl closes the shaping file. So this covers the top menu bar icons. And uh, the next video will be putting it all together and using all of the icons from the sidebar and the top of the menu bar to create a garment. Thank you.